Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you have watched my previous tutorials, chances are high that you have heard me saying this. And now I know, transformation matrix is kind of difficult to understand, but a quick TLDR is, matrices are useful to perform operations like translation, rotation, scale, shear on vectors. Matrices are a broad topic themselves and this has already become a very long video. In fact, if I were to explain matrices, I need to create a separate series for that only. And the most frustrating part of making tutorials for me is not able to give full context to my audience. So welcome to my crash course on matrices. Now a heads up first, this is going to be a long video, no matter if it's 10, 15, 20 minutes, it will be the longest for you because the topic itself is convoluted. When I was learning this one many years ago, I had literal nightmares for quite some time. Okay, with that said, buckle up for a ride, right after the intro. Okay, so imagine that in 2D, we have this nice triangle and it has a pivot on the origin. Any transformations we apply on our triangle will be relative to its pivot. Now what are transformations? In game dev, did I say game dev? In computer graphics, in order to move our geometry, we apply various operations on each vertex. Those operations are called transformations. There are various types of transformations like scale, rotation, translation. There are others, but we will cover these three. Let's start with the scale. So we have our triangle and we want to scale it on Y axis. Essentially what we want to do is scale Y equals 2. So our scale vector will be 1, 2. We don't want to scale on X and want to scale on Y 2 units. So for vertex A, we will take our A vector and multiply it with our scale vector. So 0 into 1, 0 and 1 into 2, 2. And we get a new vector which is the new position for our vertex A. We will do the same for vertex B and same thing for vertex C. And now with our new A, B and C, we will get our scaled triangle. Now let's move to translation. In translation, we basically add the vector on the current position to move our geometry. So again, let's take our triangle and this time we want to translate it one unit to the right. So our translation vector will be 1, 0. Now for vertex A, we will take our A vector and add our translation vector to it. So 0 plus 1, 1 and 1 plus 0 equals 1. And we got our new vertex A. We will do the same for vertex B and same for vertex C. Now with our new A, B and C, we will get our translated triangle. Now let's go to rotation. Well, rotation is a bit complicated and involves trigonometry. So let's once again take our triangle and we want to rotate it 90 degrees. So let me plot the formulas first. So trigonometry tells us that for any given angle A, in order to get new x, we do old x into cosine of a plus old y into minus sine of a. To get new y, we need old x into sine of a plus old y into cosine of a. It's a bit complicated, but that's trigonometry for you. Now for vertex a, we will use formulas and feed the values. Remember, cosine of 90 is 0 and sine of 90 is 1. By solving the formulas, we will get our new vertex A. We will do the same for vertex B. And again, same for vertex C. And by using our new A, B and C, we will get our rotated triangle. That's pretty easy, right? Well, maybe not so much in case of rotation, but still. However, in computer graphics, those transformations are applied by multiplying our matrix. What is matrix? Matrix is basically a multidimensional array that holds numbers in collection of rows and columns. In computer graphics, we will take our vector, multiply it with our matrix in order to get new vector. 
we will multiply our vector which has x and y with our matrix which has a b c d like this we will multiply x with a then y with b and add the results together similarly we will do x into c plus y into d and the result for that will be our new vector let's do that for scale we will keep the same case as before so let's take our good old triangle and we want to scale it on y two units so for this transformation we will plot a transformation matrix let's call it scale matrix we don't want to scale on x so 1 0 and want to scale on y so 0 2 then we will multiply our vector with scale matrix in order to get new vector so for vertex a we will take our a vector and multiply it with our scale matrix with the rule I showed you earlier. So 0 into 1, 0 plus 1 into 0, 0. Then 0 into 0, 0 plus 1 into 2, 2. Then by solving that, we will get our new vector A. We will do the same for vertex B and same thing for vertex C. And with using our new A, B and C, we will get our scaled triangle. Let's do that for rotation. Again, same case. Here is our triangle and we want to rotate it 90 degrees. So we will plot a rotation matrix with the formulas we have seen earlier. Then by solving it, we will get our rotation matrix. Then similarly with scale, we will multiply our vectors with rotation matrix in order to get new vector. So for vertex A, we will do the same calculations as we have done in scale. Same thing for vertex B. And again, same for vertex C. And with new A, B and C, we will get our new rotated triangle. Now let's head over to translation. Translation is a bit tricky because it's an additive operation while scale and rotation are multiplication operations. We can't really just add our translation by multiplying our vector with 2 by 2 matrix because of that weird multiplication rule. So what we will do is, we will add an extra dimension to our vector and fill it with 1. Then we will add extra column in our matrix and an extra row, a special row with 0, 0 and 1. Now we can apply that multiplication rule. So x into a plus y into b plus 1 into c will be c, then x into d plus y into e plus 1 into f will be f. For the final row, x into 0 will be 0 plus y into 0, 0 plus 1 into 1 will be 1. So now what we are doing is by adding extra dimension on our vector, we can essentially add c and f in our matrix. So that can be our translation vector and we have found a kind of tricky way to perform addition into the matrix. Alright, so let's see this in the action. Here is our good old triangle and we want to move it right one unit. So let's plot our translation matrix. It will be 1, 0. Then we want to move one unit on x, so 1. Second row will be 0, 1. Then we don't want to move on y, so 0. And last row will be the special row. Now for vertex A, we will take our A vector, add the extra dimension and fill it with 1, then multiply it with our translation matrix. So 0 into 1, 0 plus 1 into 0, 0 plus 1 into 1, 1. For second row, 0 into 0, 0 plus 1 into 1, 1 plus 1 into 0, 0. For last row, 0 into 0, 0 plus 1 into 0, 0 plus 1 into 1, 1. Then by solving it, we will get our new A vector. We will do the same for vertex B and same for vertex C. Then we will take our new vectors and disregard that third dimension to get our translated triangle. However, what we have actually done is we applied shear on our triangle in 3D space, but it looks like translation in 2D. Now imagine translation in 3D. We will add an extra dimension to our vertex 
and an extra row and column on our matrix then we will do a shear in four dimensions but it will look like translation in 3d but what we are actually doing is some pen dimensional black magic trickery which is mind blowing but why why we apply transformations in such a convoluted way life was a lot easier before what was the need for a matrix well imagine that i want to rotate our triangle 90 degrees then want to scale it on y axis so by doing it easy way we would do three operations for each vertex of our triangle for rotation then for scale we will do another three operations for our vertex a b and c in total we end up doing six operations which is not a big deal for a three vertices triangle but what about my one million vertices king piece for rotation and scale we would end up doing two million calculations and the more transformations we add it becomes more costly that's where the true power of matrices lie we can concate multiple transformations by multiplying matrices together so in our case we will multiply our scale matrix with our rotation matrix and then we will get transformation matrix that has both scale and rotation encoded in it the rule to multiply our scale matrix with rotation matrix is for first row first column we will do s1 into r1 plus s2 into r3 then for second column we will do s1 into r2 plus s2 into r4 for second row first column we will do s3 into r1 plus s4 into r3 and for second column we will do s3 into r2 plus s4 into r4 by the way don't represent matrices like i did it's just for explanation in real life it is represented with index of rows and columns so our s1 would be s00 s2 would be s01 and so on and due to this weird multiplication rule scale matrix into rotation matrix is not equals to rotation matrix into scale matrix also matrix multiplication will concate the transformations in reverse order so we first want to apply rotation then scale so we will do scale matrix multiply rotation matrix so let's calculate our new transformation matrix so for the first row first column 1 into 0 0 plus 0 into 1 0 for second column 1 into minus 1 minus 1 plus 0 into 0 0 for second row first column 0 into 0 0 plus 2 into 1 2 for second row second column 0 into minus 1 0 plus 2 into 0 0 then by solving it we will get our transformation matrix if we want to concave translation as well we would just add that extra row and column to it anyway let's rotate and scale our triangle with our new transformation matrix so here is our triangle we first want to rotate it 90 degrees and then scale on by and for that we have our transformation matrix now we will just multiply our vectors with our matrix so for vertex a it will be the same calculation that we have done in scale and rotation then same for vertex b and again same for vertex c by using our new a b and c we will get our new rotated and scaled triangle and we have achieved our transformations by calculating our transformation matrix then we did three calculations for each vertex with that transformation matrix so we end up doing four calculations instead of six which is not that big of an improvement but for my one million vertices king i've just cut the cost on 999,999 calculations which is a massive improvement now we know why we use matrices in computer graphics but what data it actually holds there are various matrices for 2d and 3d like 2x2 2 3x2 2, 3x3 2, 3 3, but they are all subset of 4x4 4 4 matrix which holds x-axis y-axis z-axis translation position or let's say offset and the fourth row will be that special row for translation operation now if a matrix has same right axis as our game engine same up axis and same forward axis also its translation offset is the origin of our game engine 
and the fourth row is the same special row, then this matrix is called identity matrix, which means no transformations. So if we multiply identity matrix with any geometry, the geometry will always remain unchanged. All right, if you have made this far, congratulations and pat yourself on the back. Now you can dive into the documentation with ease and hopefully matrices will never haunt you again. Phew, that's the video. If you find the video helpful, consider like, share and subscribe. Wishlist my game Cosmic Roads on Steam. If you have any questions, post them in the comments. That's it from me and I will see you guys in the next one.